Hey, D Floyd, Floyd World, whatever you want to call me, I'm here. Salute. Man, fuck y'all niggas, man. Okay, listen, we were some the whole studio was surrounded by police that night. So in this in the section is me, my man Sock, the 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 revolt nigga. It's too short. And it's Joe Button, right? Hey, Pleasant Thoughts. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the Unpleasant Thoughts podcast. I'm your old Shampoo, aka Big Shampoo. This is your boy Slider Guy, no lie. And we got another special guest with us today. Let salute, me salute, today. salute, salute. Hey, D Floyd, Floyd World, whatever you want to call me, I'm here. Salute. salute. Uh, shout out to y'all guys. Yeah, shout out to you, man. For sure, for sure. Tell the people who. Oh, uh, shit everywhere. Uh, Floyd World on Instagram and YouTube and I think the High Thoughts podcast on TikTok and on Instagram as well. And so I'm going on Facebook somewhere. I just can't get on that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. How y'all? I'm good, bro. How are you today? I'm beautiful, man. It's, uh, you know, the weather crazy, but we here. Oh, yeah. We here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to jump to my uh, first question for you, man. You mind telling us, uh, where did you grow up and how you grew up? Right here, um, D.C., born and raised. I lived in PG, too. I went to Suitland, too. Um, got kicked out of DCPS. So I got people on both sides. and um, Really, but outside of that, I done lived all over, though, since then. Atlanta, Florida, New York. So I kind of really got a, a different type of style or sound, even with my music. How I grew up, um, so I guess that explains it. Like, just I traveled a lot, bounced around a lot, spent time with a lot of different families. So I was around a lot of older people, elders or aunts, uncles, you know, grandmothers. Um, grew up in the studios. Music was around me my whole life, you know. And um, I think pretty much just like anybody else right here, you know, we was influenced by the stuff that was around us. So. You talking about 80s and 90s in this area. You know what you experience in the crack era, the, the murder rate. But then outside of that, we had so much culture. Everybody always highlight, we always, highlight, myself included sometimes, we highlight the shit. Like I just said, crack era, blah, blah, blah. But I also seen beautiful shit in this city growing up there. I don't really think people experienced anywhere else in the world. So, you know, it's definitely in my DNA. So you got the whole cultural background, mm -hmm. and then doing the music. Like I said, you got people in your family who've done the music before, so you did yeah. it first, right? I'm the first to do what I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm the first to do what I do, but now nah, we got you know shit. You know, listen. I would say, man, I I got some brilliant people in my family all all around. Like, um, I got an aunt who really my aunt. She really who put me on a lot of the music that I was listening to. The mob and the Bob Marley and all of that shit. That's the side I get from there. But I got family that's in music as well. I got a father, my father in music. I got uncles, cousins that do music. I got cousins right now that do music. It's in go-go right now. So it's all in us. Pause. Super pause. Super pause. Super pause. Don't bait me with these bullshit questions, man. You know what my father would do, man. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Like, listen. Uh, no, my father do music. Ain't no doubt about it. He and Go Go, uh, and been a Go Go shit his whole life. So, um, what made you take the direction you took? Man? You know, I tried the Go Go shit. I ain't gonna lie. Look, I ain't gonna lie. Even on my, uh, I was talking about shout out the junk y'all. <laughs> shout out the book. I, I tried. I tried the Go Go. I, you know what I'm saying? I tried to start my own dream. What was my shit? Shout out to my nigga Michi Woods, man. We had a, a band called Dream. It wasn't Dream Chasers. It was like uh, <laughs> Street Dreamers. Street Dreamers band, right? They were on the radio. We doing auditions. That shit really ain't going nowhere. We had a couple shows. That shit flopped. And then I tried to rock with uh, JY, and then it was an issue. Nigga pulled his pants down. It was a whole bunch of wild shit happening at the CFE. So that was the end of that. He ran open the grand closing. It just wasn't for me. And then plus, honestly, I never, be real with y'all. I'm keep it real with y'all. I never like. I never liked you know, any sort of, you know, I'm, I'm a Capricorn, uh, but I'm a man's man. Pause. Like, I, I want to do everything. I'm my own man. So I never wanted to, like, get by off of that's little such and such or that's such and such people or this and that. And so not for nothing. We, you know, me, you know, so we working on our own relationship. So I, it, it was something that I kept kind of near and dear to me, my relationship with my people. Um, and then I just always had my own thing. I was a poet. 
I'm a writer. Like that, I mean, just by nature, like this is the shit I was put here to do. So the rap kind of more, you know, I was a two, Tupac r- real heavy with me. I seen Lil Wayne. It's the first CD I ever had. Uh, the, uh, the Block is Hat, the first jump, right? No, I'm talking about the first jump, 1999, nigga, The Block is Hat. Lil Wayne wasn't even cursing on that jump. Look, I don't curse, but in this verse, nigga, fuck the world. This is Wayne talking about Reginae in 1999. So this was my inspiration to say, hold on. Oh, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? It changed my whole perspective. Changed my whole perspective. Did you uh, like pick up anything from that era like that to start writing your own rap when you were younger? Yeah, like, you know, we used to do all that shit. We used to like put the uh, tape over the tape cassette and, and, and put it in the joint, and the karaoke type shit and record, you know what I mean? Like freestyles and we wanted to be all them niggas. We looked up to the DMXs, the Jay Z's, the Ja Rules. We looked up to them guys. We looked up to the BGs, the Cash Money's, the No Limits, the Masterpiece, Scarface. Yeah, that's what the legends right there. Now nah, inspiration, and then they come. We seen them come to DC. Like a nigga like Scott, we watching them come to DC. Devin the dude, we watching them come to DC and perform with the Go Go Band. So we got a whole different respect for them. You know what I mean? I know I did. And so even when I moved. That was major for me, like to be in Atlanta and to be in these industries and see, like, damn, this is how I really go behind the scene. So, which area you feel like um, probably had like the biggest impact on? On me? The music wise. Shit. Um, this area is big for go go, like another area. But I always consider my music go go music, even though it's rap, right? If you listen to it, I don't know how much of my music you heard, but it's high energy. Even if the, it's met, like, um, my energy, my delivery, my performance is just high energy performance. Because you got to think, when you performing with go-go bands, it's 11 guys behind, you know, on the stage. So you got to actually project in a different way. You got to rap over top of the congos, rap over top of the drums, the percussion section. If it's a horn section, you got to rap over top of all the, all the instrumentation. And you got to be able to connect with all of these people in the crowd. It's 400, 500 people in the crowd. The average rapper don't come from that background. I come from that background. I come from watching Go-Go try to make the change over to the mainstream, right? And, and doing everything from replacing the Go-Go tracks in the, in the studio with mainstream drums and taking the, the Go-Go. I, I watched them do all of that. So I know how much been going into us trying to push our culture to the forefront. So in my music, even though I'm not using Go-Go instrumentation, I'm still using the concepts and theories and even how I am as an artist, walking around at the show, shaking hands and connecting with people. This shit I got from Go-Go niggas. Make no doubt about that. Gotcha. Yeah. You say you still follow Go-Go going mainstream. What's the biggest reason you think that it happened? Because you say people that come here, they mm-hmm. perform with mm-hmm. man, so they must like mm-hmm. it somewhat, but mm-hmm. it hasn't really made it mainstream. I think, I think a few things. One, it was too cultural based. Right, like it's almost one of the things we use it as a badge. Now we say, "Well, you gotta beat it. It's, you gotta beat it and know." But that's not really true. Like Beyonce, you not a Beyonce when she said, "Uh oh, uh, that's go go." Rich was able to find a way to do that with the production with A Marie, with Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? With certain art, CeeLo Green undid it. Artists know how to do it. Nelly had a number one hit. It's getting hot here. That's Chuck Brown. So even if we change the everybody, that's what I'm saying. Salt and pepper. Right, EU and them was uh, either they they was nominated or got the Grammy. We forget that that was back at, uh, in school days with Spike Lee. Yeah. So we got the potential, but I think I think when you think about a shrinking record industry, right? For one artist, right? For me, the label barely got the money, right? Let alone eleven niggas. Yeah, you gonna bring the whole crew with you. We seen what happened when Wale tried to bring. Mm, CCB, UCB with him, UCB with him. We only need Trey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just need the singer guy. We good. Leave the, leave the rest of the niggas at home. We good. We use them when we come back. Right? We got we got people. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. And that's so it's. <laughs> It's big. It's big business, and the money don't. The money don't add up. You know, the sales won't equal enough in returns to pay all eleven people properly. Yeah. So the labels is like, nah, we'll take him and we'll take him. 
And that's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> that's real, dog. I mean, think about that shit. Like, it been some great bands. Uh, yeah. It been great bands, but then, then you gotta look at it like, damn, look at look at backyard and them. It's songs they hit that sound better than the original song. I'm, a, I'm about to I'm about to put you in a Dale position. There's a lot of songs that. I ain't never heard the regular. That's a fact. 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 This was a real job. Yeah. 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 We the only. We the only culture that could do that. They they could pass to a lot of other places, New Orleans, this and that. But we the only ones that could do what we do right here. It's other places that's similar, but we the only ones that could do what we do right here. So that answers that question. Like this. This still my biggest influence. I've been all over the world, but DC is nothing like it. I guess they got they messing with it some place. I said my brother, he he rap, we live in North Carolina, down in Bama, though, but I say them all there performing with it. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. They had motherfuckers in China. Fuck Fantasia just was at the the, no, the, the college drink. Doing overnight scenario. It's about three in the morning, the pancake house. Jay Z had a number one hit. We say 12 a.m. at the Waffle House, some shit like that. Come on, man. They've been taking DC shit forever. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Yeah, yeah but I feel like, like I said, the mainstream on this aspect of Gogo was just like people just wanted to pick what they pick and pick. Now music is oversaturated mm -hmm. with the same sound. So mm -hmm. if it's going to be now in the pop, it'd be a nice little niche, like it already is, like a niche already is, like you know what I'm saying, like already in the culture, already in the community. I mean, go ahead. What you about to say? I feel like now, like you can say, niggas here didn't use niggas here ain't used to rap. It, mm. Like it wasn't as many rappers. Here. No, it was little, no, little, it was bands. Like, yeah, you know what I'm it was just all bands. You had covered because we used to rap like that. So what y'all think about that? Now they they got okay, all these rappers, but then all these rappers doing the same little what they call it, the DMV flow. A, a lot of them, like I don't know, because like, like, on, man. Maybe listen to some of them. Like, I don't, some of them, some now, I don't want to fuck up no future interviews for y'all. You talking nah, bad nah, about nah, this? Nah, no, it's like it's it's almost like when okay, Migos or the future or future and two chains and them niggas really start bu bubbling in Atlanta, yeah, right? Everybody was like trying to sound like them, and it was like them other Migos crank for sure, but them wannabe Migo niggas sound like shit, they trash. Yeah, I feel like that might but then I don't really know. I, but also now, but also I really like, like oh, you can't you can't do it like that because somebody might got popping off that joint first. You also see somebody else come in with that sound. They're like, I'm gonna steal that sound. They were like, steal that sound. You be like, damn, you just took that man sound like that. I seen I seen KP right. Perfect example, young nigga right. I seen KP do some shit, and I'm like, okay, that's his style. And then I heard somebody else that's trying to do his style. And it sound like some shit. And then you could have an appreciation for, oh, KP shit really motherfucking. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you hear it, you're like, oh, shit, he's doing this and that. But the other niggas, they, it's like T-Pain. He really can sing, nigga. Like, and that's what y'all missed. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really can sing, nigga. He can sing, he can sing like First shit, time, nigga. I don't know if people see the mic going something to see it's working. Fuck, Not facts. Yeah, they just, probably don't know I, all the things. They don't know. Like they don't know. He can sing for real. Auto tune ain't gonna sound the same. No, no, no. So if this shit cut off, he's like, I'm good. No, but everybody kept, everybody doubled that wave. Everybody rolled that wave. Pause. And I think that's just a sign of success, though. You're like, you know, y'all in the podcast world. If um, if this nigga do an episode about uh, Michael Jackson, whatever, and they get a million views, now fifteen thousand of a podcast go do an episode about Michael Jackson. Yeah. And then they're gonna do an episode about his episode. Yeah, and they everybody about to talk about that word. Everybody are we talking about cat? I can't wait. I mean, but I'm just saying, it's okay. <laughs> no, because this is what we at. Everybody, it's the everybody's chasing algorithms. Everybody, we are it's, you can't just put out a good conversation. No, niggas wanna they wanna hear the salacious part where I said fuck that. I might say it okay. Man, fuck that bitch ass nigga, nigga. That's exactly what they be like. Oh, shit. And use that. And I'm telling you, use it for the clip, nigga. Yeah. Hold on, wait. Man, fuck y'all niggas, man. And cut. <laughs> and cut. And use it. Yeah. And they use that for the clip. Like, Floyd kicks over the bottle. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody, click, 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 click. It's gonna watch what people do. And watch what people do. And y'all putting out great content. But this is the point. You already gave up the regular shit. shit. The they don't know they care. They 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 tune into Cat Williams to see him say fuck Steve Harvey. Well, you watch the whole, I watch the whole. And it's a whole bunch of gems in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see him like that. It was just fuck everybody. But I see how it started though. He just realized this. Yeah, he did. He did. He did start off with the fuck everybody. It's okay though. Yeah. It's alright yeah. because. Yeah, man. And but plus. This how we, you know, put some medicine in the candy, bro. This how we gotta do it. If you only listening to me, for me to say fuck this nigga or fuck that bitch or I'm the nigga, I'm the cool. Go ahead. What you about to say? But now I say I understand why that work though, because like at the end of the day, you gotta catch the attention from the beginning. Immediately. And so him coming out the gates. And I don't wanna hear that positive made shit. Made you know what I'm saying? It made niggas stay because like. A lot of times the good parts and the shit start like in the middle, but if they never get to the middle, that's it. Then it don't matter. Watch this. Shout out to my nigga Ryan, right? Uh, he the co-producer on my show, right? On my on my pod, Hot Thoughts podcast, right? And we go through it. We we show be we uh <laughs> show be we Kobe and Shaq for real, right? But one thing we agree on, right? We gotta get your attention right here. So we might start the episode with the trailer, right? Quick little 45 seconds, whatever. But the most, some of the most salacious shit. And so in your head, you locked in. Then we go right back to, get, hey, DC, what up? Da 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 da, what up? It's the high doors, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But but we we locked you in for the first 45 seconds. It's just like with my song, with my music. That first 45 seconds is so important. It's so important. I might not say nothing just so the suspense bring you in. I might fuck it up with an ad lid or me talking shit. Or me saying some goofy shit on the hook. You might turn it off. But the expectation for something great after listening to 30 seconds of just some great ass instrumental, now you're like, oh shit. But this, yeah, I, I learned these tricks from Go Go though. I, I just want like all of this shit tied back to DC. Like, we 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 are all of that. We are political town, but politics is theatrics. We're getting the middle of That's a fact. I mean, I feel like us, it ain't really our everything. And DC? Yeah, I'm just talking about not matters like us. Yeah, like people, it ain't our everyday book. We ain't really. But subconsciously, it is because everything politics. Mm -hmm. Everything politics. Us doing this, we politicking. It's politics. It's politics. I don't know your beliefs about government. That shit don't matter, right? But the bigger goal is for us to bring more attention to each other's platforms, and to talk about some shit, right? And have an opinion, have a voice. And build our voice and make sure you know what I'm saying like that's it. See, that's, 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 why I, that's why I like crossing over, but that don't really seem too popular here for where for where it matters as much as I would like. Yeah, what you mean? And for instance, we even had people on. Mm -hmm. Can't get on their shit worth shit. Mm. And I, I just I don't know this shit weird. I'm like I get it though. Everybody don't really know us from being outside, whatever, whatever. If they know us, they probably know us from. This shit. Mm -hmm, so I guess mm -hmm. they want to have on whoever, whoever popular. But I be thinking it's very realistically. I say it ain't relevant entertainment wise worldwide mm -hmm. for niggas to be acting too big for anybody. For real. But it's a, but but okay. But but it's double edged sword with that, right? So couple things. One, <laughs> if. We got to work across, not work up, right? We got to work across, right? So if this person is investing a certain amount of money, right? I don't know. Let's say Gillian Wallow or whoever, right? Well, they invest with sponsorships. We know they got the deal and this and that. So it's money behind them. But that, that production costs a lot of money, right? They flying the guests wherever or they fly to the guests, right? Room and board, that whole thing. Camera, crew, the whole thing, right? Everything. Production costs. That shit costs some money. So now, how do I get a return on investment? How, where, where's my ROI? Where's my return on investment, right? Uh, this is not about uh, Gilly and them thinking I'm too big to have Floyd on my show. It's Floyd going to do, I mean, how many views is that going to get me, right? And so how do I recoup? How do I generate some, in how do I make it make sense, right? Now, here's what happens, right? So they tell me, Floyd, hold up. Not right now or whatever. 
But in the meantime, I keep building my platform and my profile higher and higher and higher. So then it starts to make sense because it's not, we always talk about in business, um, you know, it's not about getting what you deserve, right? We talk about, it's about getting what you negotiate, right? It's an old saying, everybody know it. But the number one asset in negotiation is leverage. Instead of me calling you and saying, hey, bro, give me $5. Why don't I call you and say, hey, I see the leaves in your front yard is crazy. I got a rake. Let me come, you know what I'm saying? Get that for you. I only charge you $5, right? Because I made myself useful to you now. Now you call me and say, hey, I tell you what, can you come do this every week? Now I got a contract with you, right? Because I made myself an asset. But if, if there's a thousand podcasts, Nobody knows. I don't know if some rapper hit me in my DM and say, yo, nigga, what up? We need one. I don't know you from a can of paint, nigga. I don't know if you will come in my studio and lay everybody down in this motherfucker, steal my cameras, put a gun to my head. I don't know. I don't know if I ask you the wrong question, you will get up and beat me over the head with a bottle. I don't know. Am I going to have to shoot you in this motherfucker and catch a charge for a podcast, for a view? Or you will come on here and say, fuck this nigga, fuck that nigga. I might fuck with them niggas. You will come in here, bring some niggas, this ops with some other niggas. Have you been trying to get to some niggas that's at this location that I record at? And this is your way in? I don't know. You don't know. So for everybody to kind of protect their brand, right, we got we to gotta put some more thought into it. And so the best thing for me is like, how do I make myself for lack of a better term, an attractive asset to this company, right? So I might be drinking Malegro tequila. And I might give us, I might do us, oh man, this Malegro is so smooth. Man, it's so smooth. I don't even need nothing with it. No ice, no nothing. It's Malegro. Reposado by, uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I might do that. And then tag them in it. Tag them in, yeah. Come on, man. This is how we do it. But I can't be like, man, fuck Malegro. They ain't give me no, they don't know me, nigga. It's a thousand me's. A billion. They don't know. There's four billion people put their music up on Spotify every day. I seen them for the payoff for them. them for Yo, it's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? Imagine me be like, damn, I'm not on yet. Yeah, I seen them payoff. I was like, damn. Yo, we get paid 0. 0.003 on a yeah, penny. penny. I said, well, that's how you even. That's not Nigga be talking about he got a thousand streams. Nigga, so what? <laughs> what you, what you, what you want a t shirt with that? Yeah. That's, that's it. <laughs> Damn. It's real, bro. I, that, but I, I, I just look at it like, you know, we have, like, I guess we do cater to people probably like to artists who don't really have the picture. Mm. Kind of artists who say we were their first, For they, sure. first yeah. interview. But a lot of them came through. They had some great stories. Yeah. They had good music. Yeah. They just they ain't really got motherfuckers giving a fuck about the pushback. That's it, that machine. And I just kind of, you know, I just kind of like, Discovering new motherfuckers, like for real, for real, and they doing what they let to do. That's the type of shit I just. That's like, real. I like the support, and I guess that's my way of supporting it, per se. But that's just. There's nothing know, wrong. With, I'm, I'm with you. No, that's not that, yeah. I know that ain't everybody. Ain't everybody. No, you ain't doing nothing. That's what you're supposed to do in your position. Ain't everybody go to. You know, no, why you think that? I'm saying everybody. It ain't everybody go to just put up. Put everybody on. So on. Yeah, lift up. Sometimes people got to get there first, right? Like sometimes, and this is the best advice I give anybody, invest in yourself. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Like when I, when I was down on my last, okay, let me go ahead and buy this camera. Okay, let me go ahead and get this LLC. This is, don't spend your last bit of money on some bitch. See, can I say bitch on Don't, I mean, don't trick off. I'm just saying, listen, don't, don't spend your last little bit of money on some pussy or some shit that's going to attract somebody who you think is going to be attractive. Go ahead and invest in yourself because this is going to be how you make that money back and then a hundred times that, right? Like, get the camera, bro. I, don't, I might not have nothing in my pocket right now. You'll never know it because I got a fucking 5K camera that cost me two, three thousand $3,000 and I can set that bitch up in the corner and talk my shit about that. This nigga Floyd got some good production. I might have lint in my pockets, nigga. But whatever I got in my pockets, I'm gonna put it into the into the business. I hate to see people everybody saying the brand. I'm gonna put it into the business though. Fuck these bitches, man. No disrespect. 
Fuck it. How can you provide for somebody? You gonna be out here fucking this and that had kids can't provide for them kids, man. How can you do it? How you gonna teach your kids how to have a dream? You ain't gonna be abandoning the kid. You gotta you gotta leave some footprints in this motherfucker. And that take work. The woman gonna be around you, she'll be like, this bum ass nigga ain't gonna, he don't got no ambition. He don't got no hustle, no drive. He's just waiting for somebody to give it to him, huh? We gotta invest in ourselves, bro. Like we okay, if whatever we got, if we making a hundred a week, 30 of that need to be going into the pot or into some investment. Put up, put up, put up, put up. Now you finally got you a couple hundred. Now you got rent you. Whatever, whatever it is, bro. But just invest in yourself. Whatever it is, use your phone, use the camera, rent a camera, whatever you got to do. Uh, okay. Take $25, $50 and go on Instagram. Do some uh, shared. Okay. Go hit DMV Hoods and News up. Uh, uh, only DMV, DMV Daily. It's all of these blogs. Go pay a stripper on Instagram, fifty dollars. Fuck seeing her in the strip club. Go to her Instagram. Say I can't shop you fifty dollars right now. Yeah. Play my music, dance yeah. my music. Yeah. Hey, hey, baby girl, can you smoke some weed and watch my podcast on your Instagram stories and put it on TikTok? I give you hundred dollars right now. And say this is the funniest shit I ever seen. And she'll do it because she's selling pussy. For less than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's selling pussy for less than that. I'm telling you. That shit will go with the fucking dead. Just put the link right here where you showing your titties. You know what? What on your only fans when you doing that thing you do? Hey, man, take that. I'll give you $100. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to squirt one off for a nigga while you playing that new Session 12. Yeah. What? 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 That's it. And then guess what? You'll see your numbers. Because this will happen. I'm a, I've been rapping 20 years, bro. Like y'all, the rap shit never was a popular thing, right? So I did a lot of other shit, too, that made me a little more popular. Right? I, put my, I was at, I, we had the biggest nightclub, Love Nightclub, Platinum, all of this shit. We had that, right, in our back pocket. This is the nights we were promoting, the biggest college nights, Thursday. Then we moved to the Saturday. We're like, we brought Beyonce up this motherfucker. There's no doubt about this, right? Like, so this is, this is, in, this is, <laughs> Uh, ever, nigga, you know what I'm saying? And then the streets and all this other shit. So one thing about it is, is, is people people want to fall in love with the persona. They want to fall in love with the, the right? And that, that it shows by how much you invest in yourself. Like we want to think that I put a song out, everybody knows me. Why isn't it platinum? Nigga, they listening to Beyonce 5,000 times today. They listening to Rod Wave when they crying. They listening. They listening. They listening to the favorite artists that you're listening to. They listening to them. So we got to invest in ourselves so we can be comparable, so that they see us when they see them. Mm. Takes a couple dollars for a new artist. It's gonna take about two hundred thousand dollars to break a new artist. I heard that, bro. That's a fact. <laughs> I heard it though. Like you can't. No, it take about twenty thousand to break a record. Yeah, they say that's trying to break it. Just to break the record is twenty thousand. That's for one song, twenty k. Like y'all niggas thinking y'all keep showing the money. We can tell you're not using the money. Cause y'all some shit. Half of y'all, you keep showing your money. You better use it for a lawyer. <laughs> Cause it's coming, a Rico. Nah, but I feel like a lot of like artists these days. <laughs> I know I'm burnt out. No, I'm gonna tell you right now. Like artists these days, like. So you like you grew up in generation, right? Probably right before my generation, right? Mm -hmm. So as you're getting older, you see like the nineties artists, they was a lot in it. They mm -hmm. investing. They today hustle and then invest it. Doubled right? up, yeah. So you know you got rappers that will rap mm -hmm. will hustle mm -hmm. and they get caught. And that's how this world <laughs> gets tricked back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They didn't they wasn't really hustling for real first. They just got like mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and was doing regular people shit. So mm -hmm. we get money, mm -hmm. regular mm -hmm. people shit. You, then after that, you got the persona. Fame, yeah, the persona. Some fame. It was like, shit, I'm going to really do it. But she's not really about this shit. Right? And if we want to keep it real, COVID fucked a lot of niggas up. Because niggas was getting them checks, them free checks. Free oh, man. <laughs> Listen. That's the best era of my life. Oh, my God, nigga. This nigga still get pussy off what they was having back and forth. Because she still, he still wear that Dior sweater every time she come around. He still, he still got them shoes. She like, damn, he got the Gucci's. He getting a bitch every week with these same Gucci's he been rocking since 2023, 21. But that the money stopped. Man, you and I had a listen. I had a strip. That's a whole another conversation. 
But I know I had a, an, a it was a cool little check, but it was coming in like clockwork. I ain't lying to you. Yeah, yeah, hey man, yeah, but I was working my, I was my employees, I was paying my employees, right? So, <laughs> hey, listen, a lot of niggas wasn't prepared for them to cut that money off, and so now we got to live this lifestyle we've been living for the last year. Now we got to sustain it. Now we got, I mean, I was just taking bitches to Roof Chris for lunch, spending bands at, 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 at this place and that place, going in sacks, going crazy, right? Now, I can't go to the corner store buy a white t-shirt now. I'm fucked up. But I can't let nobody know it because this is my whole aura. I don't got 20,000 followers on Instagram because of this chain I got. So now niggas is putting their life on the line to go rob a nigga for his pound, right? So he can go sell a $25 KD and make a $10 profit. It's, it's all profit if it's stolen, by the way. Let me just say that. Oh, that. But then you want to go flip it. So now you got, you know what I'm saying? So it's a whole thing. Oh, but the plug, his price too much. Especially if you just stole another nigga. So now this plug, this price, so now you go rob him. Now you, you know what I'm saying? Attempt murder, murder charge. This thing is a cycle and it's fucked up and it's real, but everybody chasing this shit. They chasing it. They chasing the adoration from this this thing that we in front of right now. And they are a lot to live up to because like social media is where they face their persona off. So like you were saying, yeah. they see me, they follow me because of this. Yeah. And Damn, I got it. No, just say you changed it. Let's say you found God. Let's say you turned Muslim or something. It's okay. Just be Muslim. We might so I'm like, we love you over here. Just say you Muslim now. You don't gotta worry about there's a lot of Muslims that used to sell a lot of dope and killed a lot of niggas. And they done put their money up and they say salam leg up and they good now. We good. It's a lot of Christians, it's a lot of a lot of people. Change your fucking life. It's okay to come and say, hey, I'm out. I'm out. Ain't nobody think, looking at me thinking I'm somewhere uh, in shootouts with 18 year olds. I don't have to pretend or perpetrate that bullshit no more. I, sm I don't got to do that. We protect ourselves. We make sure we get home. We protect our family. That's just law. But outside of that, man, these fake tough guys, that's nothing to prove here, man. You done done everything you're supposed to do at a certain point. And if you made it to a certain point, you, you don't got nothing else to prove. If you, if you got in one shootout, whatever you did, you done it, and that's it. Go ahead, write a whatever, write a hundred songs about it, whatever. But that's what you want. Man. I, I'm with it though. Tell the same story one time. But no, tell the same story a thousand times. <laughs> Get wealthy, nigga. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Martin Scorsese grew up around old Italian mobsters. He done made ten movies about it. So that's what I was saying, though, because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, he don't live with he rap. And mm -hmm. they say it in a negative way. About who? Just not knowing anybody in particular. They just say a okay. lot of people don't live with they rap. So it gets. Look, but see, look, look at that. I didn't mean to cut you off. Look how fast, as a rapper or as just as, as a man, my immediate reaction was about who? And I'm, I'm, I was, I'm, my whole, my whole, this is, this, this was really, fucked up about us. Really but I'm talking about even me. Like you say, even me. They gotta put out 12 albums this year. As soon as you said, I'm like, who they said that about me? Who they said, who said that? Right? That's just in our it's in our heart, and we feel like we gotta prove. I'm saying to me, but I know a lot of people say they don't want to hear that shit if they ain't living, but I be like, mm. I don't really care. Because with the, the director do write these movies, yeah, they like, do the like, best movies. Movie yeah, yeah. It's all entertainment, and I'd rather you not be doing half of the shit you say you're doing good. I'd rather you not. Like, yeah. This this whole thing of ours, you know, I there's a term called the griot, right? Right? Some people pronounce it griot, griot. But th it was a person in our tribes, right? I'm gonna do some oh, I'm on some old other shit, but they was the ones that told the stories of the people, right? They kept all the stories. They was like the historians, the poets, right? Mm -hmm. That was our position. And as rappers, as artists, it's our position. Pause to keep the stories of our people, right, and to tell our story. And we can't get caught up in that. We can't get caught up in trying to live and tell it simultaneously. It don't work. Um, I, I'm, I'm a testimony, right? I done caught charges and looked at 20 years, right? There's a reason why I'm doing 12 albums this year. It just passed. Because I let 12 years go by damn near where I would put out one here, one there, because I was actually living what I'm rapping about. So I'm actually... Doing this shit, right? What did it benefit me? 
what did it benefit me? I, I didn't. Now I'm I'm now I'm just an old rapper, right? Now I, all my stories are real. Cool. I got all the clout. I got all the respect. I go out, niggas dap me up as love. Nigga might say he showed me my first this and that, right? Cool. What do it do for me now, right? As I'm still chasing this dream I got, but I let it I let it go. So it's okay. That's why I tell these young motherfuckers. Just cool. You got your clout. You got your stripes. Let's move on. Ain't nothing waiting for you but a Rico. Like y'all said, the nigga, now you got people with this, they get a little buzz with the rap, and now they trying to, yeah, oh, to, my man. My man does, but I'm about to really become that man, and he trying to be tight. Come on, man. Yeah. But what, what do we expect when Drake is the most popular rapper in the world, and every song he telling you he paid for niggas to get killed? They do be saying a lot of shit. Every song now, Drake is the biggest gangster. Drake is John Gotti. But he don't say nothing when they shoot a nigga in the street. He don't give a fuck about you then. Do he don't. Him, yes, I believe him. I him. Do I? Do we believe him? Do we believe this nigga? This nigga that used to stuff the lockers. Nigga, you give this nigga a couple hundred million. You think he ain't off with his head? He telling you every song who is man. He got a song. Let me tell you about my brother though. He want to tell right now on the nigga. He want he, he want to tell you who his killer is right fucking now. Let me tell you, and people are like, oh, this song jamming. What? 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 He said all that yeah. shit. Rest in peace, Triple X. Yeah, he be sleeping and shit. Come on, dog. I mean, I get it. Huh? Last shit, people saying, but I don't, I don't rap. Let me tell you, Puff. Say I don't rap. I don't really know how that. Puff Daddy, the biggest gangster. Everybody know. I hate when people talk about oh. Uh, you not you can't be gangster if you grew up and you knew both of your parents. All this stupid shit, right? Because you like Man. all of these Italian niggas that killed a thousand niggas. Your mom and father gangster. Are we playing? What we what we talking about? <laughs> it's 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 some it's somebody somewhere convincing niggas that the only way you could be thorough or solid is to be dumb or a, dirt poor. That's because they want to get in touch. Yeah, exactly. But the gangsters used to be smart as shit yeah, and solid. I'm, I'm, to a television get caught. That's me being a Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm so gangster with it. I just shook a hand. Have a nice day. That might Come be on. Nice Come on, man. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I guess it all depends on the mindset. Cause like I say, where we from? Everybody know at least one killer person. Stop it. Yeah, of course. At least one. At least one. I mean, for real, we know we all got family. That you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Everybody heard the stories around the cookout here and there. But it ain't really, come on. It ain't really nothing to me. I don't brag on certain shit because I don't know who my people did something to. So I don't even want to tell nobody the fuck I'm related to. I don't know. Like, I, I got shit to do with it. I wasn't it. We seen this shit from an early age, too. And let me be real. Like, even this year, when you talk about DC, and you say, uh, what was it, like 240 murders, 270, 270, the number of murders. But if you open pause, if you open that spectrum up to include the whole DMV, we we in, the numbers are incredible, right? What the murders was in 2023. Um, shout out to Booby, he just was on. We was talking about, I mean, at one point when it was 700 murders, right? So it's all perspective. But what's happening now? And this is all being televised. So it's a difference between Washington Post and in my phone. In my the first thing I do, God damn, sometimes I wake up. And I might, I might want to start off with a prep to my before I even open my eyes. I'm like, thank you, God, I woke up, right? I'm like, I try to be conscious about it. But I can't lie, dog. You might turn over and go open up your phone and see, damn, who hit me on the IG? Before you hit the bathroom. I try to, I mean, you, even if you tell yourself, I'm not going to do it today. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> tell myself. Okay, come on, man. Because, like, it's, it's such an accessory, but now they, it's an accessory to addiction now. Cause you know what I'm yeah, you have you, it's, it's, part, it's part of your it's, life. It's just uh, we getting our news from because so now you can justify. Like for me, my mind, my subconscious justifies it. Oh man, I gotta promote this music. I, I know I need a four. Oh man, I gotta promote this new uh, episode. Oh, I gotta I gotta get a retweet. So now you now you posting a meme, then you posting a joke. So then you can post the flyer because you know the algorithm. If you just post advertiser shit, it'll make sure you shadow ban. So if all you posting is your podcast, that shit gonna get ten views. So you gotta throw a meme in there. You gotta make some commentary. You gotta do some funny shit. Cause then, oh, your views go up all of a sudden. I post myself with a uh, 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 toothpaste on my beard, and damn, oh, I'm fucked up. I'm high. I'm, and it's gonna get a thousand views, right? But if I post, 
hey, we donate into this family whose house just burned down. All of a sudden, I'm at 30, right? If I'm posting unpleasant thoughts, unpleasant thoughts, unpleasant thoughts, unpleasant thoughts, all of a sudden, I'm at 10, right? And this shit is crazy, but they it's because Instagram wants you to pay them $10 yeah. to promote your shit. It's because they want you to pay for them advertising. So... So motherfucker, hey, I guess they feel like we let y'all niggas use it. <laughs> That's what they thinking. That's what they thinking. Y'all, you ain't about to keep pumping your session twelve, nigga. Fuck that, nigga. We want, we want some. Yeah, we want a little money. Yeah, twelve niggas. That's crazy. We tell, we tell everybody. Yeah, yeah, we tell everybody. We tell everybody. <laughs> Shit, give a fifty your money. You put your blue check. Well, that's how you lower them in. That's the streets. Hey, hey, bro. Take this motherfucking pre roll, or hey, take this little gram or whatever. Yeah, like, hey, come back later. Come back yeah, 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 yeah. It's some good Molly, ain't it? It's some good boo, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you hook. I used to do that with the. Never mind. I used to be mad one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 where you get that from? Yeah, yeah. I remember saying, hey, right? I got what you yeah. need, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's me. Pop the trunk. Allegedly. Allegedly, not nah, a statute of limitations gone. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> if they giving out Harvey Weinstein, what's this nigga Epstein uh, list? And it's like, we good. That's we sold a little drugs. They selling crazy, little man. girls. It's a difference. That's a crazy yeah. list, bro. Yeah, well, crazy, shout out to Bill Clinton. Nah, I just think about with them famous, <laughs> famous people. They said they be into a lot of crazy ass. Yeah. Lot of, like, but you know what I be thinking about too? Like a lot of these movies, they ain't coming from just niggas' imagination. Come on, man. Come on, I like that. I like you, man. You tight. It's real. Why you? Where the fuck you thinking of that? Why you thinking of that? Them facts, nigga. This this shit they be knowing. How how all the aliens be looking the same, man? Like what's going on? How what y'all know? We don't know. What's up? All these movies kind of connected. Cause it's just too many different type of movies. Like, and I don't know. I question certain motherfuckers. Like niggas that create movies about serial killers. Mm-hmm. You might make eleven of them. Mm-hmm. You really like killing niggas. Yeah, you must. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might be responsible for a couple of jobs we don't know about. Like all, all them joints. Like, Jason Duke got like twelve. <laughs> it's easy money, nigga. It's easy money. Niggas like coke. <laughs> People like shit. They really. They listen to it, they don't do though. I feel like yeah. they don't do it. They like listen to it. Like, I can watch a motherfucker probably so much socks and this all this other shit and all that other wild shit. I wanna do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not gonna put my position self in a position to be like, I'm gonna fuck a wheel back. Uh no, nah, there's some shit I'm not going to do. Like Yeah, but people spend well, white people do that though. Nah, no, they ain't scared. Nah, no, no, yeah. all white people do it though. All white people ain't that brave either. People spend money with what they comfortable with. Yeah. You look, you look at the go go shit. People come out three times a week, four times a week to see a band hit the same songs. But they but you come. Love it though. Yeah. But you love it. Yeah. It's something you love. So you feel familiar everybody with them? Fixed. Yeah, facts. Everybody got fix. Facts, facts. Your side bitch might be there, your wife don't know. Yeah, that's about it. It's fix or something. It's fixed fix or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm fortunate to grow up in that world. Like, I, um, Man, I, I know so many of these great legends, dog. You know what I'm saying? The big, G- I mean, every I ain't gonna name one because I got to name all of them, right? But I remember, like, and then it'd be so tight because I like I remember seeing Chuck sitting in the limo. Chuck used to park his limo right outside the, the liquor store, right there by Rivertown, and he used to sit in this motherfucking stretch limousine, drinking like cognac or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this nigga Chuck was a like we we grew up. I'm trying. Listen, I'm trying, I'm trying to say. I'm trying to tell you. I used to see Murray and Burry every morning. I used to go to this restaurant. Shout out to everybody southeast. You know what I'm about to say. Mama Cole's on uh, MLK, right? I used to go every morning, and Murray and Burry used to be there every morning eating breakfast. Like I got these memories with. I mean, I, I know some of the the most legendary drug dealers in the city I've ever seen, right? That 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 changed their life. Or whatever they did, nigga, or they was able to put some money away for a rainy day. And, and they came home, you know what I mean? And they legends. Shout, uh, shout out to Tony Lewis, you home. These guys took their honor and they stood on it and they came home, they legends. And they're using their time um, now constructively to give back to the same city that they loved the whole time. I won't say that they took away from, 
that's up to them, them other people to say they took away from it. Yeah. Come on, man. What was you doing at 21? These niggas was rich by 21, a lot of these niggas, man. These niggas was rich by 21, 22, 23. What we talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, For me, it is. And it wasn't no other way they was going to make a million realistically. Ever. Ever, so, ever so maybe. I could keep telling them to stop. I mean, you know. Come on, man. I, I mean, I, I try to be understanding. You know what I'm saying? I got people that whatever. Shit. Even if I don't do what people do, I ain't going to judge you. Nah, you can't. And every and listen, you don't know. You don't really know what the lick is. I mean, when you get into something, you don't really know which ways it's going to go. You know, I, I mean, when I like just that in that world, it things take an unexpected twist all the time. You might walk in a situation thinking you 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 might be there for this, or you might be leaving with this. You know, if a nigga look at you and say, "Hey, hey, can you you go?" Hey, you, who's before you might say, no, I'm straight. I'm going to go home with you. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Give me all three of them suitcases, nigga. Let's go. Right? Life changing. You don't never know what you're walking into. And so you just got to be ready to make the adjustments as they come. And so salute to them, man. Who've been able to make the adjustments? Because it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like some of the biggest jokes. Like, some people look at that, though. Mm. Man, feel like. I'm glorifying it. Not, not necessarily you. It's just I feel you. people look at it and say that that's the way it go and shit. I tell you, I made the conscious decision not to do it just because I seen like the mm -hmm. side okay. on side effect early and shit. Like like my father got killed at three. Sorry to hear that. And he's eight, but he, you know what I'm saying, was out there. See, my, my my oldest brother, he just came home last year. He got locked up ninety three. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I kind of seen like it don't really always. And that will for a nigga. You know? It never ends up well. And then I also saw the effect of it on my mother. So, you know, I'd be like, shit, me personally, I ain't finna put her through that right. type of shit also. So, you know, I I, I get it though, because that shit, it look good from the outside looking in. It look, <clears> look good. And maybe while you in it and it's going good, it probably feel good too. It feel, it feel all sorts of ways, bro. Nobody talk about it. That's why I never was a Gucci fan, because every song felt like the re-up day. But what happened when the nigga kick over your shit and get your stash? You know, what happened when the police kick the door in? What happened when somebody at your door is a jack boy, they trying to rob you? Now you got a shootout outside your own spot. It's your spot. All the work in here, all the guns, all the money, everything in here. And now you got to shoot it out with a nigga. What do you do then? Yeah, no question. Because if you don't move, they coming back. What do you do when other people are victims because of you? Casualties. Right, people who might have just been in the area, who might have knew something more than they sh should have known, and now they life in the balance because of you. So all of this shit happens in the game that people don't primarily talk about. But so I don't say that to glorify it, right? Uh, I only said to say that these people were able to take their situation and change it. Uh, but growing up in this era, in this area, and in this era, I meant era, but this area as well. This is the shit we was influenced by, dog. Like, even the way we dress, our style. You, you see the whole world doing this European and sleep, but we was doing this since 88. You know what I mean? Like, we was, everything that Puffy and Biggie and these niggas was talking about, they got from us. All these rap niggas, they stole, I mean, everything. No, that's a fact. Even before there was a Rockaway or a Fat Farm or a Sean John, there was a Universal Madness. There was a Hobo. You know, there was there was the all days. There was this there was this urban street culture. This is how Kanye able to come up with this because he was he was coming up right here. Makunu, we are one. We could do this all day with these brands that that shape DDTP. Damn, I forgot about DDTP. <laughs> come on, dog. They had the shot right Yeah. There. Yeah. Stop it, yeah, nigga. Right yeah. by Kiefer Sons. Yeah, Kiefer Sons. <laughs> Shout out to Kiefer Sons, nigga. Yeah, DTP. I forgot about it. Yeah, we, we was the originators of all this shit. It's just a smaller market. It's just a smaller market. See, but that's how, like you were saying earlier, like when people incorporate go go, they can come here and take shit and take it bigger. I don't know about you before. Yeah. Except for us. But that's why we got to shout out to my, shout out to my sponsor, Designer Huff, Dope TV. 
listen, that's why we got to keep doing this. I could have came in here and wore some design or whatever one looks sweet, but this is the design I'm wearing because these motherfuckers, listen, this guy said, man, I want you to look right on, on, on your show. You know, I want you to look right on your stage, and I believe in your brand, and I want to partner with you. I want to sponsor you, right? So we got to do that for each other. I come on y'all brand. It's another black-owned brand, two brothers, right? So I'm going to wear another brother, right, so I, so I can say right here on camera and shout them out. That's what we got to do. This is how Gucci became Gucci. You know what I mean? This is how St. Laurent and all these other brands that we fend you. This how they. This how it happens. It don't happen in the vacuum. That's why everybody they get all partnerships with each other. They all connected. They all connected. See, and that, that, that's kind of like what I was trying to say. We all connected. Like, connected. Reference and earlier, like when I say the earlier ain't relevant worldwide. Yeah. Enough for certain people to act a certain way. Because I'm like, say they got a joint with this shit, the on the block joint. Mm hmm. Plenty of people got joints, but they do people with money. You could turn that shit into a on the block with mm -hmm. everybody on you got paying all this money to go out of town. You got it at home. Yeah. You can make some shit we got here relevant. But on the block charge you. I mean, that's what I'm a saying. A lot of money. And you probably got to pay to get out there. So, <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to pay. They not giving you no ticket. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you got shit. They sent me a nice little email how much they charge you. You got shit oh, thank you. that you can turn up, though. <laughs> yeah, but but the re but but here's the flip side to that. Hey, them motherfuckers from out of town won't come here. The reason why on the block is so successful is because they have the finances backed by the people paying them to promote their show to a certain level. Mm -hmm. So if you have a show that doesn't charge people, it doesn't do what on the block is doing, right? It won't have the same success because they won't have the same financial backing. Is generated, so you need the financial backing to be generated. If that's by charging people, if that's by getting sponsorships, is that if that's by going down the chase and getting an LLC and creating a loan for yourself. <laughs> Some of y'all niggas got good credit. Some of y'all niggas don't got no felonies. Go get you a motherfucking small business loan and put that shit in your business, man. Don't buy no Chanel, no fit. I don't even know what the fuck designers people wear that. Don't buy that bullshit. Go get a real okay. Y'all did it for COVID, so you should know how to do it now. Small business loan, and go invest in yourself, nigga. Spend some money on advertisement. Just because people know you from Go Go back in the day, or you was a nigga with the hands, or you sold some weed, some niggas back in college, whatever it was. Fuck all that. Pretend you pretend nobody knows you. Think like a McDonald's. Every time a new McDonald's pop up, they spend at least a million dollars on electricity just for the sign outside alone, just for the M. Right, and then they put a billion burgers served. Now that this motherfucker it wasn't, they just opened up the day. But it's called advertising and marketing. So now when somebody driving down the street, they're like, "Damn, well, and there's fed a billion burgers in this motherfucker. Like this is a trustworthy place." And then they go right that big ass bright ass yellow light you see from a mile down the road. McDonald's is the biggest brand in the world. You think they need to spend a million dollars on marketing for each location? Fucking right, they do. Fucking right, they do. That's why I, I, I be like, I ain't like, I understand paying for the Instagram shit only for the fact that, I if I post this and I see who view it, it's the same people right here. <laughs> they know I got they know about, yeah, yeah. They, they ain't watching, yeah. They ain't about to start watching that. Maybe I'm telling somebody come on there, but they ain't give a fuck. Yeah, they don't give yeah, a fuck yeah. yeah. Fact. That's, what that's how I be looking at it. That's why, I'm like, I ain't. Spin I, ain't I ain't tripping on. I didn't pay Instagram for COVID time. Okay, but so now, so now it's time to diversify. You know what work with don't. So just diversify that 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 investment, right? Like I say, we got to think outside the box. TikTok is killing people, not in the not in the little so. like, but it's it's taking over, right? <laughs> We've been talking about a bunch of wild shit. Was, TikTok is killing people, <clears throat> but <laughs> that's a clip. Right here. Yeah, that's a clip. That's a clip. Um, but no, for real, like like it's a way to do it. And just find the right influences and just, you know what I'm saying, collaborate. Keep doing what you're doing because as we just seen with Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams, all it takes is one. I guarantee you, he ain't know that was going to be as big as anything. He said he thought it was going to be five to 10 million views, most. It did way more. Most in history. Like Joe Rogan had the top the day. five days. Joe Rogan had the top two episodes in history. One was at 36 million, one was at 32. And then the third, Shannon came in third. No, yeah, first it was Shannon was like at twenty seven. He wow. way he way yeah, over I thirty. Last night was like thirty four. Yeah, he yeah he about to. I took him an hour. I said, "This ain't twenty five. Nah, that shit thirty four. I said, "No, that's 
Millions. Yeah. That means niggas is click. click yeah. Click, 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 click. That motherfucker going back. What? But then you know what? Another thing is. Yeah, of people, course they're going to go back. A lot of people with us, you know, on YouTube, they make reaction videos and shit. So they go and uh, rewatch the shit. Yeah. Movie, so they don't miss nothing. Yeah. So they can have talking points. Yeah. Shit like that. So that shit. Like it's a it's a it's a it's a YouTube channel. Like their whole point of existence is to talk about shit that happened on the Joe Button podcast. Yeah, it's a lot of shit like that. I see the nigga did a TikTok about my show. He was like, "Hey, this guy was talking to their like he did a whole breakdown." I'm like, "This is tight." I hit him up. That's what's up, dog. Made me feel like somebody. I mean, this shit. This is this is that. Why are you watching? Like them, yeah, yeah. 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 Tell us a little bit more about your podcast. Um, okay, man, we started like 2017, I want to say, 7, 16, 17. I was putting out a project called Crown, my music, Crown. Can't rely on weak niggas, Crown. Uh, Crowns, Crown or Crown. And um, I went up to Bliss FM and I did some another episode of somebody's show. And the station kind of was like, man, would you like to come do your own shit? And after I came back from, I said, well, give me a second. I'm going to think about it. So I came back from South by Southwest and I seen that everybody. <laughs> I never told nobody this Joe Button story. Can I tell it real quick? All right. So this is crazy. So I, um, I go to South by Southwest. I just got off house arrest, right? So I'm, I done printed up all these fucking flats. So I had a, I had a, I had like an epiphany while I was on house arrest. I'm studying everything. I'm on YouTube. I'm studying everything. I went to MIT, got a business psychology course, uh, certification, all this shit. Like I'm just studying. And so I say, okay, CDs are done. You know, I used to spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars on blank CDs and getting them pressed up, going up, hey, hey, take my CD, take my CD. I'm like, that shit over with. So I started researching different ways to give media out uh so i came up with the flash drives and the qr codes but in 2015 qr codes weren't on every phone you had to have an app or it had to be an android right so i had all these big flyers and all this shit with the qr code on i had merch glow in the dark wristbands everything but all the flash drives the the, the music i put on there was corrupted so i couldn't give out no flash drives <clears throat> so I had to network with the shit I had, the flyers and the merch and, and shit like that. So I was everywhere. Shout out my nigga Scotty ATL. He had a party um, at the the ba Backwood party. You know, if you ever been to South by Southwest, they got all these sponsored parties. Backwoods, Swisher Sweets, whatever, right? They got buckets of Backwoods out there, right? You can get whatever you want. And so I'm backstage. I'm telling my man, congratulations. Shout out my nigga Sock. And Sock over there in the corner was some nigga. He was working with Revolt. I can't remember his name. He like a VJ or something for Revolt. A tall, tall brown skin nigga. If anybody know him, he don't really got a lot of facial hair. I don't know if that's about mine. So I go over there and I'm talking to my man Sock. Shout out my nigga Sock. He did be rapper too. Uh, and man, we sit there chopping it up. And so and this is like the third day in South by South by West for me. So I'm like, I got a book bag. I done figured out that it's legal to drink in Austin, Texas. Everywhere you could go in the middle of the street, you can smoke your weed, police be right next to you, drink whatever you want. And they don't search your shit. So I'm going to this party. I got a book bag. I'm not getting no bot drinks from y'all. I got a book bag full of tequila and weed. So I pull out this big ass bottle of tequila and pour myself a cup. The nigga Joe Butt. <laughs> so in this in the section is me, my man sock, the 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 revolt nigga. Damn, I hate to say it like that. It's DJ something. It's something. He a good dude. And it's like Marissa Mendez, who used to be with Hot 97. It's um Lil Flip for some weird reason. <laughs> it's, 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 that's true, that's true. It's too short. And it's Joe Button, right? <laughs> right. So Marissa Mendez and Joe Button had a podcast called We'll Name This Podcast Later. Which turned into the Joe Button Podcast, right? So Man, I'm pouring up a cup. I'm, I'm rolling up my weed. And Joe is like a, a confrontational nigga, right? So, like, Joe walks through this whole crowd with the table. Joe walks over to me. 
And he like, <laughs> yo, what's up? I'm Joe Button, <laughs> right? So I just want to be clear. This is before Joe was like, the podcast wasn't shit. It might have been a couple hundred subscribers or something. It wasn't nothing. Not to disrespect, I'm just saying it was like, it was, it was, it was yes, podcast period was up and coming. Right, so and he, and 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 his rap career was on the decline, nigga. On the decline. Pump it up. This is slaughterhouse ain't working, right? Soggy t-shirt around the collar, right? This is bad. But he walk up and he like just, <laughs> yo, oh, yo, is that shit? He like, yo, um, he like, yo, I'm Joe Button. I'm like, yo, I'm Floyd. Woo -woo. We introduce ourselves. And we keep it moving. He like, he sizing me up though. You know what I mean? He like, all right, bet. And he goes sit back down. Cool. I ain't really know what that was about. So we, 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 damn, this, this whole story fucked up. So we, we like, all right, we got to get to the next menu. But I don't know where they going. When I say we, I mean they. And I'm just following along, right? And my man, my man had like a sock, shout out to sock. He had something going on somewhere. So he's like, I gotta go. I'm like, fuck no, I'm staying, I'm staying with Joe Button and Too Short and these niggas. Too Short disappears, Lil Flip disappears. Now there's just me, Joe Button, and like two or three, Marissa Mendez, and some other people. And we rushing to get to the Tory Lane show, right? <laughs> Shout out to Meg. And, <laughs> and <laughs> we get to this venue, whatever. We finally get in. It was, I was with the nigga Pause and the rest of these people all day. All day until we got to this last stop, and it was like, it was everybody started to like dwindle off. Right, off. Yeah, and it was like super obvious, and I'm just here. <laughs> like I don't know nobody, don't nobody really know me, and I've been kind of getting by all day, you know, with a couple jokes here and there, and this and that. But now niggas is making weird comments, like, all right, well, I don't know where everybody else is about to go. So I'm like, all right, it's time to fuck on. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Button. But that shit, when I came home, I started listening to podcasts more. And I started to get the signs for the Tax Stones, the Joe Buttons. Tax Stones for brick. No question. Like, this is at the origin. Shout out to Combat Jack. Um, and so, Rap Radar. I was listening to all of this shit, studying it. And so, when I got my chance to do my own show in 2016, 17, um, I took full advantage of it. And uh, we went strong. And we was uh we was live on air every Thursday, I think it was, for like two, three years until COVID hit. And you know, the mayor put that mandate out, and we was the number one show in the city. The mayor put the mandate out. There no, you know, DC facilities could be open. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Shut us down. And um changed changed the world, changed our life. <clears throat> and so we just came back this year, excuse me, 2023, rather, not this year, but last year. And um, shout out to my nigga uh, Ryan and them. Huh? I to yeah, I get used to it, right? <laughs> my nigga Ryan, you know, they got the Culture Media Network, and they had um, uh, um, Smoke in the Shop. <clears throat> and um, and so I've known this guy a long time. And so I was making a comeback with the show, wanted to do it right. And, um, you know, they do shit a little different, his style a little different. But that's what I needed. Right? Sometimes you need to be a little uncomfortable. You got it all figured out in your head, but sometimes you need somebody to be devil's advocate. All for another, what about this? And you can say no, right? But sometimes you just need to rock the boat a little bit. And it's, it's power in collaboration. It's power in partnership. It's power in networking. Like I said, working across. And <clears throat> nigga waiting for revolt or waiting for this person, that person, put something. Nah, hold on. Your brothers and them doing the same thing right over here. And let's build this up to be so we work out. We, you just negotiate. You get equity. You do whatever you got to do. You know, you make sound investments and then you create a good work. And we was able to bring back um, the Hot the Thoughts podcast. It was Floyd 118 at first. We changed it to the Hot Thoughts podcast. Man, they've been an incredible run. Uh, we had 14 episodes this season. And um, inshallah, we make it to 20. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with your couple of episodes? Damn. Um, yeah. No question. I'm with you. Um, I want to ask you what y'all favorite Jones is, but okay, well, I'm not going to play big like that. Okay. 
Man, the joint I just did with Booby was incredible. I thought um, the joint with Busta Move. Um, <laughs> no, okay, not all, not all of them, not all of them. I know Piggy, I know yeah, yeah, I know Piggy. But you know, all, I, I tell you what, the funniest one, the joke with Yappa, right? Um, from from New Impressions, that got some of the most views. Period. We had right. It's the two, huh? It's a two part joke. Man, that me and this motherfucker. Listen, we was the whole studio was surrounded by police that night. Yeah, it's a whole story behind it. He couldn't even come in the building. Cause we didn't want somebody to go to jail or, or us to be raided. It's a whole story. It's a whole story behind it. And he waited and waited and waited and waited. And so finally the police was gone and the coast was clear and he came in. We recorded for about three hours. We just sat there talking. Never met him a day in my life. The first, the, when you watch that episode, as soon as you see us talking, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is all this shit? You in the comments talking shit. And he he a man. So he held his own. I held my own. And three hours later, we just said we best friends at the end of the show. You know what I'm saying? That's I mean it's organic. I never met him before. I, 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 that's, that's, that's one of my favorite parts about this when we interview somebody we don't know. Yeah. And then after the cameras cut off, niggas just Yeah, still, yeah, still rapping. rapping. Yeah, talking. Talking. Like, we didn't that shit a couple times. Like I said, we were just laughing in the first interview, so they be nervous. Man. Yeah. Like, yeah. They start losing me nothing shit because I'm like, well, ain't about to attack you. Like, we became about what you Yeah. Now, that's, look, Pinky was a hell of an episode. Um, Danae was a hell of an episode. DTB, you know, she had that controversy when she was talking about being sexually assaulted at the MGM. Um, my nigga Mitri two times, the DJ. You know, he got that podcast, We Say They Say podcast. It didn't, it didn't initially get a whole bunch of views because it wasn't no controversy, but it was just, me and him having a good conversation. Good. That's what I be saying though. Like sometimes the good conversation, I, controversy is cool. But yeah. Sometimes good conversation. It's everything. It's, it's everything. It's everything. Like, what I do, I watch a lot of podcasts. Like in general, like, like you say, like you do research. I be doing all that research and shit too. Like on all the joints. Yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah. care. I actually care. I be looking. I'm like, man, shit, they doing that. Thing. What's your favorite uh, high thoughts episode? Then I mean to cut you off. I said, what the fuck we're going to say? Yeah, I call him a little Anthony. I like her. I, I like the thing. We had her on, we had her on too, but I was like, I had a job. Yeah, why not? Because we weren't controversial. And I ain't never, I ain't, I don't feel no type of way about that. It just, like, it was just, wasn't what they were looking for. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We was just general questions about your work, whatever. We didn't get too personal in age, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's probably what they were looking for. We didn't know that beforehand, but that just ain't really. It's okay, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, you know. This business is 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 weird like that, and you know, what, what's helped me a lot is to not take too much personal. Like even when I drop, and people don't know this, some people know this, but I get super anxiety when we drop an episode, right? Because you get people that will hit me I, up. I know this. That nigga doing I'm cool. telling you, bro. I, I, I do every time, like I said, I, like I said, the shit you said, not the joke. No, come on, come on, come like on, we partying, nigga. Like, man, I don't know if you asked the wrong question. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I ain't trying to, you know, I'm not bringing it up, but like, shit go wrong, it go wrong on my place. Yeah. Like, shit, like, I got anxiety shit. Like, yeah. I say bring everything up, because I could even say I'm not going to answer it or I answer it, but. Yeah, that's how I feel. You say you're not going to answer it, cool, I ain't going to press it. Yeah. You get the anxiety because, you, I mean, obviously you want the episode to do good, but also. You know, people hitting you, you don't know why they hitting you. You don't know if this is a genuine conversation. If you don't know, nigga might say, damn, man, I'm sorry about your mother. I heard she just died. And, damn, I'm sorry about your brother. I know she just died. But, hey, Mac, hey, hey, uh, what you think about me coming on your show? Huh? Mm-hmm. You see him at the funeral, right? You responded to me at the cemetery. Right? And nigga be like, hey, uh. Damn, I'm sorry about your mother and all, but, uh, hey, Cat Williams, nigga, we need to talk about it. What? <laughs> you need to talk to God, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, but that's just real. But but it's part of the business, and we can't. It's part of success. 
uh, or or the perception of success, right? What is success, right? But if people think you're successful, you're successful. To them, people, that's their reality, my right? Success, my success, like, right. I'm happy with the end of the day with my success. Facts. Yeah, but I believe me personally, I probably be the hardest on myself. Mm. It's only because I know what shit can get. I ain't pressuring myself saying you ain't doing enough for them times. It's like, maybe on that. If you, maybe you ain't did the right thing. Instead of, like, yeah. Like sometimes they work work smart instead of hard. If you feel like it's stones left to be unturned, unturn the motherfuckers. You know it. See, I could say he could say you know it. You know, like me. I know. In my heart, cool. I'm better rapper than da 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 da. It's something they doing. I'm not doing. I know it. When I don't feel, when I don't go on my Instagram and make it real. And I don't take and I don't have my camera here so I can have her film me in here and take a picture and I can walk up in the I, sh- I should have all that shit now. But when I look up and see another young nigga with 20,000 views, because he does have that shit, I can't be mad and jealous. I can't be like, man, these young motherfuckers, I'm a better rapper than them. But they got the intangibles, nigga. They understand the game where it's at right now. Fuck where it was at in 97. Niggas ain't waiting at Def Jam for a record deal no more. We create this shit. We are the business. We are the brand. And you can play that game and win or have a chance to win, or you can not play it at all and not have any chance at all to win. That's how you want to go. Yeah, a lot of this shit is on you to work for real, especially when like by promotion. Well, you can't you can't change the game from outside, bro. We gotta be in, on the court. We got to be on the court to change this motherfucker. We can't do it from the stands. There's too many niggas in the stands. There's only one LeBron. Too many niggas in the stands, but there's only one Steph. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker from half court every time. <laughs> so you realize, nigga, I, I do this. <laughs> you don't even get the ball in the stands, nigga. Go get some popcorn, bum ass nigga, and shut the fuck up. Because the niggas that go, go, get out here every day, like y'all, like me, who working, we on the court. We giving everything blood, sweat, and tears to this. You can't, you can't criticize me. You don't do what I do. You don't invest what I invest. Yeah, at all. Nigga, you can't even speak on me. You are you Harvey Cole. You skip Bayless to me. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'm paying y'all hundreds of millions. Fuck that. Come I'm on. Big yeah, billions. Hold up. Yeah, Hold yeah. Up. Something gonna change, nigga. Something gonna shake. Something gonna shake. Yeah, that's it. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. But you'll get an investor. Like we, you know, we'll get them investors. We just gotta invest in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? At all times. Right. 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 Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your podcast is under a network. I partnered with Culture Media Network. Uh, that's my man. Uh, initially, that was their their situation, and uh, we I just thought it was a good marriage to make happen for season one. And we did it. We had a, uh, so far we've been doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yeah. Sure. I appreciate y'all. So season one um, wrapped up? Nah, I, I, I got about five more episodes. So a lot of this stuff is already pre recorded. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it go. You know how it go. Three a day. I'm trying to get back to that. I got to do all the editing. Yeah. It's easier to me. Just I'm knock always, it out. If I'm already sitting down, yeah. I can edit three and three. I got like, I started editing it when we used to rap. Yeah. Like back in high school, back in that, like 05, 06. Y'all gave the wrap up? Yeah. We, 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 we were rapping. Still, when I, if I say you niggas weren't yeah. rapping, we was rapping. Do I put niggas weren't rapping? Yeah, we like studio music? Nah, like 05, 06. I get that too. 07. Like, I got videos on YouTube like 14, 15 mm-hmm. years ago. I, mm-hmm. had, I taught myself how to edit it like 15, 16, or motherfucking Windows movie, nigga, type shit. But, um, yeah, I gave it right up. But what we will do sometime, we'll get drunk a few times. Yeah. Hey, Betsy, don't. Yes, sir.